have you ever seen Lacey Sturm band play before? Like, <laughs> how many saw Flyleaf ever? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, thanks for sticking around so long, it's amazing. And um, how many people have heard actually my story of how I was rescued from suicide at 16? I was going to stay sad for my cousin. I became addicted to sadness because it wasn't right to be happy. 
happy in a world where children get beaten to death. It's just not right. So I hated happy people. I hated Christians. I don't want to talk to you if you believe in God unless I was going to tell you how stupid you were. And I became an evangelist for not how stupid it was to be a Christian. And um, and I, if you told me something was a sin, I could do it because you're not going to control my life. And so where's the sins at? Let's go there. Let's do them. And the thing is, God says, he tells us actually sin actually means miss the mark. In the Greek, it's actually a big word for missing the mark. God is love, so it's actually missing the mark of love. That's what it is. We missed it. Um, and he said, if you if you do this, it's going to lead you to death because you keep going off this way. I'm here. You may go over here. So it's going to lead you to death. That's why he tells us what it is. It's like, this is death to you. Sorry. I started to feel deader and deader and deader.
who loved with purity. And we feel all messed up in our temples because we're made for him to live inside us. We, don't, we feel empty because we're made to house God. Whoa, how empty. We're trying to put some little thing in there. It's like, God is meant to live inside your body. Holy Spirit living in there. This guy was loving me with the love of God. There's no other explanation. I was a strange kid, purple hair, Pantera shirt, did, had this don't talk to me look on my face. And he loved me. <coughs> like Ryan. <laughs> like Sonny. And he said, he said, he'll be a better father to you. I said, I, in my head, I said, I don't need a dad. He said, he's seen you when you cry yourself to sleep at night. And I taught myself to do that. I didn't think it was right to go to sleep without crying because of my thoughts about my cousin's death. And I thought, it's not right to go to bed happy in this kind of messed up world. So I would make myself cry to sleep unless I passed out somewhere. And so I would meditate on all the sad things. I taught myself to do that. And he said, he sees you when you cry yourself to sleep at night. There's been, you've been rehearsing your pain. He said, there's been pain in your heart from your own sins and from the sins of other people against you and your family. And Jesus died and suffered to take that pain. Himself, so you don't have to carry it in yourself anymore. Can I ask? Can I pray and ask Jesus to take that pain in your heart? And I was like, I, I had this logical moment in my brain. I'm like, I'm going to go die. But there's this, okay, you could try it. And I realized there was pain. I wanted to go away. Emotional pain that I was tired of. I, caused, I kept causing it in myself and finding it everywhere. And he was like, let me ask Jesus. I said, okay. for a long time. I thought all Christians had this experience with God. But I realized I have what is like a near-death experience. This is a unique thing. Not everybody has this when they come to faith. And I think it's beautiful that people can believe without seeing this. That is the most beautiful, precious thing to God. It's the most amazing gift you can give Him to believe. He says, you are blessed when you believe without seeing. You are, you are blessed when you believe without seeing. That's it's not love to say, oh, prove it. It's love to believe somebody when they say it. To be believed in is loving. And this is, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I was, I, but I had this moment, I had a near-death experience, and I am standing here to tell you, if you've never had this, you are listening to somebody who had it happen. I've witnessed this. I saw God. And the Bible says you can't see God and live. And I don't know why I survived that. Right, And I've seen in the scriptures, I remember reading afterwards, I remember reading people say in the Bible over when they saw God, they're like, I'm going to die now because I just saw God. It's all in the Bible. Every time they have an encounter with God, they say, how are we going to live now? And they're like trembling because it's like that. God is the creator of the universe. That's the first thing I understood. I, stood, I was standing in front of the, my creator. I, and he was perfect love, perfect holiness, perfect peace, perfect goodness. He is good and holy. And I didn't know what holy meant until that moment. Holy is not a, the beginning of a cuss word. Holy is something so far beyond us. Holy is, is God. God is holy. Holy, holy, holy is God. They say it and the angels say it like over and over. Holy, holy, he's holy. It's so far removed from this. There's no dirt in it. There's no darkness. It's just complete light and love nothing you can hide in front of him and I I spent a lot of my time excusing myself justifying my life justifying my sins justifying why I had the right to be the way I was I spent so much time in conversations with people justifying and I'm standing in front of God I justified my atheism and I'm in front of God what do you have to say now nothing speechless what you have to say is like hide, like Adam, like I'm naked, you're God, you see it all, you want to hide, and it's, it's the right thing to do, and I knew that if he cast me away forever, it was justice, and it was right, and I was waiting for that moment, and my life went before my eyes, I had a life review, I saw everything in my life, and I saw how hateful I was, and how 
kind of stuff I was. I saw all the things I thought were okay. They weren't. I saw that I was never loving, ever. I thought I loved my brothers and sisters. It was not love. It was selfish. It was conditional. It was limited. It had nothing to do with God's love. It was not loving. And here I was in front of God, and He was love itself. And I was not. And if He cast me away forever, it would be justice. I saw all my blasphemy. I saw the first time I said I didn't believe in God. I saw I was trying to impress this kid and I decided to say that out loud and I saw what it did to his heart when I said that. I saw that he felt okay to say it didn't believe either. I saw that hurt and that, that fork in the road for him that I caused. I saw the people I made fun of for being Christians. I saw how I I saw a lot. And I saw that I was I was wrong and I deserved death and hell and I like if he said go away it would be justice and I was waiting for it and I wanted it. It's weird because when you're in presence of God you want what's right. Especially if you're like a justice person, like I am, truth person, you're like, I don't deserve this. And he never looked away and he never condemned me. I did. And you will condemn yourself in the presence of God if you don't know that Jesus died for all your sins and you believe it. That's the only thread you'll have when you face him. But he died for me. I don't deserve this. But he died for me, and now I have to come. (laughs) That becomes justice. Like, I have to come. And I just say, I witnessed this. (laughs) Not everybody gets that opportunity I'm telling you today, if if you're wondering. There's no reason for me to tell you this. It's actually taken up a lot of our set. (laughs) They didn't ask me to tell you this. But Ryan really convicted me when he talked about that dude OD. And you only have one chance. And I know there's people in here that heard what he said and you still don't know what you're going to do because you're hanging on to things. And I just want to know, if you don't tell anybody if you don't know, I just want you to know that you, God is like open arms. His, his door is open. And the spiritualism stuff we talked about, that's climbing in over the window. You become a thief and a liar. You only come through the spirit realm through the open door of Jesus and his arms. And he'll bring you in and it's, you don't have to steal nothing. And you don't have to take something you're not ready for. He'll give you what's good for you. He's a good father. I'm still talking. <laughs> <laughs> so that really happened. And that's why I'm still standing here. And this song actually was written about that experience. And it was our most famous song. <laughs> God is so awesome. He's the one that, he's, he's the one that writes the story. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the one that's 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 the one